Hello and welcome. I've wanted to record something on property for the longest time, but I always felt like it was premature. I didn't have much value to add. But you know what? After accumulating six properties in the last 10 years, I think it's a bit rude and unfair not to. I know there are you know, a lot of people out there that might have more than I do, but I hope that you can relate to my story and to my circumstances and that this knowledge will help you to accumulate a good portfolio of properties for you so that you can retire in comfort. The difference between this course and a lot of other courses is that I'm not just listing terms and players. Within each specific term and with regard to each specific player, I give you some insight from my own experience about how you can interact with that term or player in order to benefit your own property accumulation game. Property is fun. I enjoy buying and doing up property for the sake of it. Um, for me, it's not even about money anymore. I just enjoy the property game. This course is designed for people who have nothing and think they could never own a property portfolio of that size because quite frankly, I didn't expect myself to. So if you're watching this and thinking, oh, all these people that talk about property, oh, I started out with 4,000 pounds, now I have a quarter of a billion. I don't know how they got there. Well, then this is the course for you because um, in the introduction to this course, I will have shown you everything that I've done to accumulate this two million pro a portfolio, starting from a bank account that only had a hundred pounds the day that I started working. If you have any sort of questions, please email them to me. Um, there'll be an email address within the description of this course um, that you can refer questions to. And enjoy. Introduction and background. Why am I qualified to tell you about mortgage, mortgages and property? Well, in the introduction to this course, I told you quite a lot about that, but I will tell you a bit more. I know as much as, if not more, about mortgages than many mortgage advisors. Big claim, I know. Well, this is not only based on my experience of buying houses over the last 10 years, from the age of 22 to my current age, 32, but also because I was an investment banker for seven years and as a result accumulated a, no a lot of knowledge about all sorts of different products, all sorts of interest rate deals you can get that I didn't actually know even when I was a new investment banker. So there's a lot of knowledge I have that the average mortgage advisor won't have because they don't have the same work experience that I do. And in addition, being a mortgage advisor doesn't actually mean you've got a portfolio on your own. And I actually do. I also have the Chartered Financial Analyst Qualification, which is acknowledged by lots of people to be one of the hardest finance qualifications that you can get. Uh, and I'm currently studying for the CMAP. It's the Certificate in Mortgage Advice and Practice, just for fun. I love writing exams just for fun, which I know is going to sound so strange to so many people. But yeah, I am one of those people. My role in investment banking involved asset-backed lending, derivative structuring, and something called securitization, which I am not going to bore you with the details with. This background essentially means that I have a very firm understanding of how mortgages are created, packaged, and hedged by banks. Now, that's as complicated a sentence as you'll hear me utter. From here on out, I'm going to keep things so simple that you'll be sharing this course with your 10-year-old son, daughter, niece, nephew, delete as appropriate, as you prepare them for life as a property mogul. It doesn't matter how old you are when you're doing this course, you have a chance to accumulate a significant portfolio so that you can actually retire and enjoy your life. My mother, who lives in Malawi and therefore doesn't know about mortgages and the sort of property deals you can get in the West, and by and large probably has less opportunities for developing a portfolio, has accumulated all the property she has from about the age of 45, 50. She doesn't have many properties, but she has actually enough to retire, enjoy her life, go on holidays, which a lot of people nowadays are not going to get the chance to get. Retirement for now is a dream for most. It's something that will never happen. And this course is something that will actually give you the chance to retire. All my mortgage experience is currently based on the UK. 
However, I have a couple of mortgage-free properties in Malawi. Um, so I know how to accumulate property in some developing countries. So I have a bit of experience there. I've never been through the U.S. mortgage process, but I do have some knowledge of it as I've contemplated invest investing there. I've read a couple of books about the market, um, but I would say that my best knowledge is to do the U.K. The U.S. has different regulation covering mortgages uh, to the U.K., and they also have different types of mortgage deals. However, there is a lot of overlap. So if you're in the U.S., definitely you are welcome to do this course. There's a lot of knowledge that will set you up for investing in the U.S. If you're in the U.K., this is the only course that you need. Really, it's the only course that you need. In addition to any sort of questions you might ask me, you'll be well set for becoming a property millionaire. When I give examples in the course, they will be based on the UK, but if I know something about the US, I'll share it. That said, everything in this module is applicable worldwide, so you'll find benefit from the course wherever you are. It only gets very UK-centric when I start talking about fees, but that's much later in the course, so you don't need to worry about that. Big mortgage tip. And I'll give this early, because once I start sharing my knowledge, you are going to want to start applying for mortgages. Never apply for a mortgage just, just to see if you'll be approved. I made this mistake when I was a newbie back in 2006. Every time you actually apply for a mortgage, it impacts negatively on your credit rating. So your credit score goes down because it basically shows that you're looking for credit and people who want to give you credit don't like that. So if over the last six months, say, you appear to have applied for six mortgages, but you were just doing it for fun, you are actually going to eliminate your chances of actually getting approved for a mortgage when you actually really want it. Only apply for a deal once you're sure it's the deal you want. That said, look for deals on the internet so that if a broker offers you a great deal, in inverted commas, you know what else is available on the market. If a broker, for example, says to you, I found this awesome deal at 4%, you can say, actually, I've seen Bank X offering a similar mortgage at 3.5%, why is your lender so expensive? Once a broker sees you have some knowledge, you'll be offered the best they have to offer because they know they can't mess around with you. Because this point is so important, I am going to repeat it. Do not apply for several mortgages with the hope that you'll be accepted for one of the mortgages and then proceed. Each time you make an application for credit, whether it's a mortgage or a loan or to buy a car, that company makes a hard check of your credit record and it goes onto your credit record that they have looked you up. So when you are ultimately ready to apply for your mortgage, they'll look at your record and be like, why has this person been applying for all these loans? And just for the sheer fact that you've applied for all these things, you might be rejected. I actually made this mistake when I was a newbie. I remember I applied for three or four mortgages and then when I went to see a mortgage broker, he was like, why did you? In the UK, you don't actually need to have a pre-approved mortgage in order for uh, an estate agent or whoever the seller is to accept your bid. All you need is what's called an agreement in principle. So this actually means nothing completely because the bank is not bound to lend to you, but they basically say how much they would be lending to you, but that it would be subject to doing a more comprehensive background check. Um, very recently, when I was bidding on a property, I needed a mortgage in principle like fast, like yesterday. And because I was using a broker, some banks actually allow brokers to give you a mortgage in principle on your behalf. So I was able to actually get a mortgage in principle on the same day. I just called my broker. She knows me quite well because we've dealt on two properties together. And she just said, Heather, I'll have it to you in two hours. That's how fast it can be. In the US, on the other hand, um, quite a few people or quite a few uh, buyers will require you to have a completely agreed mortgage before you even bid on the property. So just depending on where you are, this can even vary within the UK from region to region, depending on how desperate someone is to sell their property. Um, see if an agreement in principle to lend to you will be enough or get a mortgage completely approved. If you plan on bidding for properties at auction, um, UK or USA, have your agreement pre-approved completely because they, allow, they require you to complete that sale very fast and if all you have is an agreement in principle to lend to you, 
it's very likely that you'll be unable to complete the process as soon as that hammer uh, hits the table. And if you have agreed to buy a property at auction, in the UK especially, and you're not able to complete within one month, they keep your 10% deposit, which can be a lot of money. So, major point is, do not apply for mortgages until you're 100% sure you want that particular mortgage and 100% sure you'll be accepted for that mortgage. How can you be 100% sure that you'll be accepted? One, look up your own credit rating. Two, uh, make sure that if you are in a special circumstance, like if you're self-employed or if you have a very low income or if you only have a temporary job, you're using a, a mortgage broker because they will know who will accept you and who will not. All these fancy terms like mortgage broker are just about to be opened up to you. So without further ado, welcome to this course on becoming a property mogul and I look forward to sharing everything I know with you. Now onto the terms and players in the market.